Hi, I'm Gina, and today I'm going to be walking you through how to use Object Explorer. Something I often get asked is, if I want to quickly answer a question in Foundry, what app should I use? Well, Object Explorer can be a great place to start. I'll be walking you through basic functionality of Object Explorer, including how to conduct your searches, how to save your results, and how to customize what you see. Let's get started. Starting from wherever you are in Foundry, you can type Control J and search for Object Explorer. And if you see that purple magnifying glass, you're in the right place. So click on Object Explorer. And here we are in Object Explorer, where you'll be able to see the various object types that you have access to. Notice that the object types are categorized into groups. These groups are something that you can configure in Ontology Manager. So for example, the objects related to dining at the theme park are categorized into the theme park dining group. So let's say I want to learn something about the dining transactions. To do that, I'll go to the search bar and search for dining transactions. Now we see dining transaction and we'll click on that. And here we see a high level overview of the objects that are present within the dining transaction object type. The exploration page comes with a pre-configured set of charts to give you a high level overview of what's going on. So here we can see the distribution of various properties on the object type, such as the credit card type that was used in the transaction, the price here of the establishment, the total, and the name of the establishment, and more. Now, if I decide to go to one of these charts and click on a value, I can click Apply Filter to filter the objects to meet that criteria. Now, notice in the sidebar here, I can see an individual list of the objects that meet those criteria. Before we go any further, let's talk about what just happened here. By adding a filter, I was able to create an object set. An object set is a subset of an object type. The important thing to know about an object set is they're not static. An object set is a collection of objects that meet a certain criteria, meaning it's dynamic. It might be helpful to think about an object set like a SQL query. It's almost like we just wrote a SQL query that says something like, select all dining transactions where dining establishment name is pure sign pedo reps. So that being said, when we get more data, our results might change over time. So keep that in mind as we move forward. Now at this point, I can click on any of these resulting dining transactions, and I'll see an object view. This is a more visual representation of a single instance of the dining transaction object type. Note that this view here can be extensively customized using workshop modules to provide the experience that you want for your users. So if I click back to this other tab, I'm back on the exploration page. Now, if I want to get rid of the filter condition that I just applied, I can hover over where it says keeping dining transactions matching one value, hit that minus sign, and then I'll get rid of it. Now, let's say I want to answer the question, which dining establishment has the most revenue? Now, none of the charts here will actually answer that question for me. So to answer that question, I'll need to add a new chart to this exploration page. So if I scroll to the bottom, I can hit Add Chart, and here, I can select various properties to add as charts to this exploration. So let's say I want to add the total transaction. So if I search for total, it will give me a chart. But this is the same chart that I have up here. So let's see how I can get more out of it. If I hover over the top of the chart and hit the cog, I have many different options for how I can make this chart look. Right now, it's a distribution. If I wanted to, I could also stratify this distribution by another property, say the dining establishment name. I can also display this as a single statistic. So if I hit single stat, then it will show me the sum or whatever aggregate I choose of the total property. Now in our case, the question that we want to answer is which dining establishment is pulling in the most revenue? So once again, we'll hit configure chart, select a stats table, and the stats table will give us a collection of statistics about this property. Now, if I want this to be more granular, I can hit group by and say group by name, which will show me these statistics broken out by dining establishment. 
So now we've created a chart that can answer this question and is more useful to us. However, we still have some other charts here that might not be what we need. For example, the transaction ID doesn't really add very much information for us. So if we want to get rid of it, we can just remove the chart. Same with guest ID, it's not terribly interesting, so we'll just exit out. Lastly, the dining establishment ID, probably not terribly useful because we can't read this. So we'll hit the X once again. And now we have a better collection of charts. Now at this point, I can move the charts around to get a better view. So for example, this chart showing the statistics, I might wanna move up to the top. So I'll click on the top and drag it, and now it's at the top of the exploration. Note that this is just one view of the dining transactions. If I click on results, I can see a more tabular view of the results. Note that if I apply filters using the exploration page, they'll apply here too. Sometimes you won't see all of the columns that you want to see in this view, or you might even see too many. To change what you're seeing here, you'll go to the cog in the upper corner, and here, you can hide or display columns as you please. So for example, I could hide the transaction ID and maybe the guest ID. And then I can save the configuration. So let's go back to the explore page. Now that I've created a more custom view for myself, what happens next? Well, if I just leave, it's not gonna get saved. And so at this point, I might wanna save this layout. I can do that by going to custom layout up here and save my current view as a new layout. Now let's take a second to talk about what a layout is. A layout is the first thing that a user sees when they look at this object type in Object Explorer. So that means that they can either see the exploration, which is the more graphical view with the charts and the distributions, or they can see the results, which is the more tabular view. So in this case, the first thing that we're going to do is set a name for this layout. And now we choose the initial perspective. Do we wanna start on the explore page, which is this one, or do we wanna start on the results? That's the tabular view. For now, we're going to keep the initial perspective as explore. And now we can choose who we set the default layout for. So the question is, do we wanna set this as a default layout for all users or just ourselves? In this case, I only want this to be the default layout for myself, but regardless of what you do, take note. The layout is a resource, just like anything else might be in Foundry, and it gets saved in a location. So if you're going to save your current layout as the default for all users, make sure you save it in a place that they can access. Otherwise, they won't be able to see it. So note that my layout is being saved in my personal folder which means that say my colleague Josh wouldn't be able to see it. So I'll click save as default layout for myself and then hit save. So now let's say I wanna answer another question. Where are the guests who are spending more than $200 on a single transaction from? Are they local, are they international? So to do that, I'm going to go to the total histogram that we already had and set the minimum value to 200. I click apply filter. And so here I can see the 18 resulting transactions that are over $200. But my question was, where are these guests from? And notice that there's no address property here, but there is a link between dining transaction and guest. And so to answer this question, I would go to the linked object guest and click on guest. And now, as you can see in the top bar, I am looking at guests that are linked to dining transactions where the total is greater than or equal to $200. And so I can see that the vast majority of guests who are spending this much money at the theme park on food are national. So now that I have a resulting set of objects that I'm interested in, let's say I wanna to return to these results. So I have the option to save my results. And so when I hit save, I can save objects as an exploration or as a list. So let's go through what the difference is here. So if I save the result as an exploration, that means it's dynamic. An exploration is a set of criteria so that when you get new data in, your results might update. Whereas a list is static. Let's say I wanna save this as an exploration. 
And so I can say this, guests spending 200 plus on food. And then I can either make it private, so just for me, or public, and I can save it in a shared folder so that my colleagues can see it too. For now, I'll keep it private and then hit save. Now that I've saved my exploration, I have the opportunity to monitor this object set. Why would I do that? Well, let's say, for example, every time a new guest spends more than $200 on a dining transaction, I want to send them a little thank you or a coupon or something like that. I could do that using Automate. You can access that by hitting Monitor and then adding an automation here. Note that you can only do this once you've saved a result as an exploration or as a list. Now, let's say I want to save this as a static list, meaning when new data comes in, I don't want the results to change. To do that, I'll go to Save, hit the drop down, Save as New, Save Objects as List, and call this Guest Spending 200 Plus on Food Static. And then I can save this in my personal folder or make it public. And now I'll hit Save. Now, once you save Explorations, which are dynamic, and Lists, which are static, you can see them at the top if they're available to you. So here under Explorations, I can see this one, which is Guest Spending 200 Plus on Food. And I can also see this other one that was created by my colleague a while back. And this one's public because I can see it. And then under Lists, I can also see the list that I saved. Note that when I saved this result as a list, it took me to a new tab in the exploration. So if I wanted to go back to my original results, I can click over back into that tab. So at this point, I have this curated object set of guests, and maybe I'll learn more by comparing them to other groups of guests. So perhaps I could take the biggest spenders and compare them to the guests that aren't spending that much. So I'll go to compare, and then notice that I have the explorations and the lists that I've already created. So you can always compare those against each other, or we can create a new set of guests. So I'll hit this and then call this guests spending less than 10. And for the filters, I don't have a property that is total on guests. And so instead, I'm going to filter on a property of a linked object, which is dining transaction. And I'll select total as the property with the maximum value being $10. And now I have about a thousand guests remaining. So I'll start my comparison. And now I can see that these charts are comparing the guests that are high spenders to the guests that are low spenders. But looking at this chart may not be the most meaningful comparison because the group of guests that are spending less than $10 is about a hundred times as large as the group that's spending a lot of money. So perhaps I can adapt the filters on the high spending group to get a better comparison. So I'll click into set of 10 guests, which are my high spenders. And now I can click on the pencil to edit the comparison set. And so I'll call this guests spending more than 75. I'll click on the filter pill and change the minimum to 75. And now I have a much more reasonably sized set to compare to the low spenders. So I'll create a new comparison set. And now you can see I'm comparing the guests spending more than $75 and the guests spending less than $10. So I'm not seeing any meaningful differences in say the distribution of addresses. What I do notice though, is that the guests that are big spenders on food seem to be taking fewer total rides. And the ones that are spending less on food are the ones taking more rides. So that's our comparison of two object sets. And now I'll go back to the original exploration that I started with. So at this point, say you need to do further exploration, you have options. In the upper right, you can say open in, and you can open the setup in Quiver. Or you can explore the data lineage of the data backing this object type. You can view the backing data set, and you can analyze as a data set in Contour. Finally, if you made a mistake or you did something and you want to undo it, you can always use the back and forth arrows at the top. And so you can undo and then redo to get where you need to get. So in summary, we've gone through how to get quick answers in Object Explorer, and then how to move on to more complex tools if you need to dig a little deeper. This concludes our introduction to Object Explorer.
We hope you found it helpful and be sure to let us know in the comments which tutorials you want to see next.